Greetings in the love and light of the one infinite creator and welcome to the eighth episode of the Seattle Law of One podcast. The title of today's episode is Divine Feminism. It seems clear that much of the destruction and pain and suffering on planet Earth has been caused by distorted, out of balance, masculine or male energies. How do we balance male and female energies within ourselves and within our world? Why is the divine feminine needed, particularly at this time of transition for planet Earth? And what can we do to help? Let's find out. My name is Jonathan Tong, and I'm facilitator for the Seattle Law of One study group. We can be found on the list of study groups on the LNL Research page shown on your screen. That's llresearch.org. We do also have a Facebook group, and we do meet on Zoom twice a week, Tuesdays from 3 to 5 p.m. and Saturdays from 8 to 10 a.m. Pacific time. You can contact us at the email address shown on your screen, seattlelawofone at gmail.com to get on our mailing list. We send weekly updates to let you know what you're doing and the Zoom links. We do also have a YouTube channel where you can find recordings of previous podcast episodes, as well as interviews with Jim McCarty and Austin and Gary and Trish from the LNL Research Channeling Team. If you are watching any of these episodes on TV, they are divided into chapters, so you can skip ahead by chapters if you don't feel like watching the whole thing beginning to end. If you're watching on your computer, you can also click on the video link and you'll see a list of topics and timestamps below. Just click on the timestamps to skip chapters as suits your need. Otherwise, as I mentioned, the title of today's episode is Divine Feminism. Let's go ahead and meet our panelists. Panelists, if you can introduce yourself to our viewers by your name and where you're calling from, that'd be awesome. How about starting with Michelle? Hi, good afternoon, love and light, everyone. My name is Michelle, and I am hailing from San Francisco Bay Area in Oakland. Glad to be here with all of you. We're so glad to have you here again, second time as panelists. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ashley, would you like to introduce next? Um, hi, everyone. I'm Ashley here from New Jersey. Nice. And Aram? Hi, I'm Aram, and I'm also in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm happy to be here. Nice. We are happy to have you here again. And uh, Katrina? Hi, uh, Love and Light from the One Infinite Creator, and I am Katrina. I'm calling from Portland, Oregon. So, yeah, very happy to be here. Nice. So happy to have all of you here. Thank you for being here, and I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Uh, before we get started, just want to remind our viewers that none of us here are experts or authorities on the <laughs> Law of One. We are normal people <laughs> like you, just kind of hanging out, sharing our thoughts and opinions about spiritual growth and evolution and the Law of One. Anything we say here could be wrong. We have no problem with anyone disagreeing with anything or everything that we say here. Let's get started, shall we? Sure. If you are familiar with the law of one, you might want to skip ahead to the chapter on why male and female energies are out of balance. But for those who are new to the law of one, should probably clarify a few things first. Uh, if you're new to the law of one, you should know that every reading passage that we're looking at here today came through the process of channeling. You can think of channeling as a form of telepathic communication between humans and non-physical entities like angelic beings, extraterrestrial beings, spirits of deceased, higher self, interplanes, entities, and so on. Basically, a channel serves as a mouthpiece for entities to speak through who we cannot really see their physical bodies. There are two main forms of channeling that we are working with. Trance channeling is when the channel is in a trance state, meaning they're subconscious or unconscious as if they are asleep. They really are not aware of what is being said or the words that are coming out of their mouths. This is how the raw contact happened in the early 1980s. Conscious channeling is when the channel is in a conscious, but a very, very deep meditative state, meaning they are somewhat aware of what they are saying, the words coming out of their mouth, but really not thinking about it, just trying to speak the words that are coming to them. This is how uh, contact with was made with the entity known as Kuo, who we will be hearing more about later. 
So who is Quo? You could say that uh, Quo is a group entity made up of three social memory complexes, Ra at sixth density, Latwi at fifth density, and Hatan at fourth density. A social memory complex is basically a planetary consciousness. It would be as if the entire human population of Earth merged into one group mind, as apparently we are destined to do sometime in the future. What are densities? You can think of densities as like different levels of spiritual evolution, almost like grades in a school. You can see that uh, humans are at third density. We're at what's called a third density level of consciousness. They call them densities because each density, supposedly the light that is there is more dense. It's more packed with truth, more truth, more information than the densities below it. You can see that social memory, uh, you can see that second density entities would be like plants and animals at a lower level of consciousness than humans. And looking above at fourth density, you'll see that social memory complexes are at the next higher level of density. So as we said, uh, Quo is basically made up of three planetary consciousnesses, one at sixth density, one at fifth density, and one at fourth density. The first contact with Quo happened uh, back in 1986 by the L&L &L channeling team. It was almost two hours after the end of the raw contact in 1984, and they have been channeled every month pretty much since then up to the present day by the L&L &L research channeling team, and you can find transcripts of their channeling sessions at the LNL Conscious Channeling Library. So that pretty much gives you the background for everything else that we're going to be talking about today. So let's take a look at today's topic of divine feminism by looking at a particular passage from Quo. Uh, and we're going to start with this one. This was from March 7th, 2020 and the question that we're looking at is why are male and female energies out of balance a person in attendance named zachary said a lot of destruction and pain and suffering on this planet has been caused by the distorted out of balance masculine how might we begin to heal that masculine energy to bring it into a more harmonious state quo says i am quo and i'm aware of your query my brother the patriarchal type of expression of energy has been that type of experience which the most which the recent history of your planet has exhibited in a degree which exceeds the normal balance of such expression when compared to the matriarchal or feminine nature that each entity has within it, whether it is biologically male or female. The apparent reason for the masculine expression of reaching and affecting and controlling and utilizing energies and entities and what could be seen as non-compassionate manners is a kind of expression of energies that has gained a momentum within most of the population of your planet for the last few thousands of your years. The reason that this type of energy of the masculine nature has been so predominant is that there is a great portion of the population of this planet that has of necessity come to this planet to repeat the third density cycle, having failed to make the harvest on other third density planets, meaning they failed to make that leap from third density to fourth density. The harvest was not achieved because there was at some point and in some degree an expression of masculine energies that attempted to control the movement of consciousness within the third density of the planet of origin for much of this planet's population at this time. This type of masculine energy which reaches and controls is that which was unable to affect any kind of movement into the heart chakra and thus continued in a repetitive, repetitive fashion to attempt to do that which had failed to do previously. Therefore, that has been the necessity upon this planetary sphere for the great majority of the population of this planet to reassess the expression of the male or masculine energy so that it may be balanced by the feminine expression of nurturing, of receptivity, of awaiting the reaching, so that the compassion within the heart chakra might be, re might be released in a manner which allows the greater majority of the population previously expressing masculine energies to begin to entertain the possibility of expressing the polar opposite that is the feminine energies the matriarchal energies that are those of the new age of the fourth density of love and understanding 
These energies have been in abeyance for a great portion of what you would call time within much of the population of this planet because there was the inability to move in a studied or appropriate fashion the male energies that were then found to be ineffective and yet still continue to generate their control, hoping at some point there would be the ability to move forward in consciousness. However, at some point within the populations so expressing these masculine energies, it has become abundantly clear in the subconscious realms of the mass mind that this type of masculine energy was ineffective and could not become effective as long as it was solo, shall we say, responding not with the balancing of the feminine energies, but restricting the expression of energies to that which was patriarchal and controlling. Thus, at this time, there is the movement within the mass mind of the consciousness of most of the third density entities upon this planet for the reintegration of the feminine, the matriarchal energies that are heralding the new age of love and understanding within this planetary sphere. However, as you are aware, there is a great residue of masculine energies that are rolling about, shall we say, within consciousness as a block which has lost its place and has no firm ground upon which to stand or focus upon which to allow the movement forward in consciousness. Therefore, we find that the new age of love and understanding that is now having its energies experienced and expressed by greater portions of its population is that of the new age, which is dawning within each heart that is open upon planet Earth at this time. There is a kind of expression of unconditional love which will continue to grow and more and more predominant within the consciousness of third density entities upon this planet as the transition into the fourth density continues. Thank you for everyone who was able to sit through that whole thing <laughs> and stay through that wow. whole thing. Quo does tend to be really verbose. You know, those of you who have read the raw uh, contact knows that Ra's answers to questions are usually just, I don't know, a few sentences or a couple paragraphs long, and Quo tends to speak quite a bit longer. But it is worth noting, again, this was all channeled material. The words were spoken by somebody who was in a deep, deep meditative state and didn't really know what words were coming out. And I would think that is one of the most amazing things about these uh, channeling materials is that I mean, if you ask this question to somebody else, I mean, nobody on earth talks like this. Nobody, whoever, however wise you might think they are or were, I've never heard anybody speak like this before. So, um, yeah, I guess one thing might need some explaining uh, before I uh, turn to the panelists for their thoughts and reflections. Uh, they did refer to at the very beginning that uh, a great portion of this population on this planet is actually coming from other planets that uh, were rendered uninhabitable by overbalanced male energies leading to war and warfare. Uh, in the case of Mars rendering their uh, planet uninhabitable, and in the case of Maldek, Maldek. blowing it to bits. So uh, we will actually have another podcast episode where we go deeper into the story of Mars and, and Maldek. But for now, that's kind of what they're referring to in the first paragraph. I would love to hear thoughts and reflections from our panelists on anything from this big, long passage. <laughs> uh, Michelle, did you have any thoughts and reflections on anything here? Yes, so many, you all. Um, Jonathan, I'm thinking where to start. Um, I would say one of the things that you know, I've been thinking, and as I was reflecting on this, and I think uh, Kuo does a beautiful job in all the passages, is to really talk about the balance of energy within for the individual. And that, um, although most tend to think about the outwardly appearance of male and female, that it's also we all have that potential, and the ability of the energies of, of masculine, and feminine, but um, one of the things I just love this passage. I mean, I think it is verbose and it really speaks to the catalyst that we have here on our planet right now that we're experiencing, you know, too much of the doing and the controlling and all of the negative aspects of the masculine energy, though there are positive aspects of it too. Um, so this helps me really think about, you know, as I'm processing um, world events, my experience, my lived experience and what's happening on the planet now. 
Um, it gives greater context to that. And um, I am welcoming that fem feminine energy from the heart. You know, um, we know that Mother Gaia, the planet, you know, is moving closer to fourth, if not in fourth already. And so the heart center is really um, that special place. It, it feels good and it's compassionate. So, yeah, I think, you know, I used to, I say funny things sometimes, you know, I don't necessarily, I do not believe in an actual heaven and earth. Um, I, I like to say that hell is right here in third density on this planet. We're all balancing and learning those things. That's just my personal opinion. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I just think about balancing those energies within myself and in my interactions and, um, how to address those catalysts or the beautiful opportunities that we experience and in, in living those energies and interacting with them. But yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, it's, it's just a very intense place that we are in third density. And, um, yeah, we all came here to participate and, and lift that high mm -hmm. vibration. Yeah, and I appreciate your pointing out that each of us, whether we appear outwardly as biologically male or female, each mm -hmm. of us has male and female energies inside. And as I think you're suggesting, how we balance those within, our, within ourselves is probably a big part of how we balance it as a, a planet. Mm -hmm. Ashley, did you have any uh, thoughts or reflections to add? Oh, what stood out to me... Apologies. I'm having really bad technical difficulties, so there's probably going to be a lag. My screen will probably freeze, but you should still hear my voice. Uh, what, well, first off, I definitely resonate with everything that Michelle was saying about the fact that we do have the energies of masculine and feminine within us. And it's irrespective of what you have, you know, physically on your body. And I think that's a key point in trying to understand working with these concepts, because if you over identify the idea of masculine with a biological body part or certain physical expression, or you over identify with the female biology, that can limit how you accept and work with these concepts on an emotional level and, uh, and a mental level. One thing I kind of, that kind of stood out was that the masculine expression of reaching and affecting and controlling and utilizing, I could see how that is not a bad quality. That is the quality that builds civilizations. You know, we see all of the bridges and the mount and the, the buildings that are as tall as mountains, all of these inventions on our on our world and so on. That is a part of that masculine expression of reaching and affecting and controlling. It's necessary. But when there is a lack of the feminine which connects it to the source of the open heart, then that becomes distorted because there is a sense of hunger that you can't get from just reaching and affecting and controlling in the three in the 3d space in the external space you have to also have that connection within so i was just able to have a moment of compassion and appreciation for the masculine mm. beautiful yeah, well said. Much appreciate. Uh, Aram, anything to add? Yeah, I have stuff to add. Um, I appreciate what uh, Michelle and Ashley have both said. And to kind of um, piggyback, I, I sometimes I make the mistake of um, confusing, you know, gender with masculine, feminine, and it's more of, I need to remember that they're the energies that all genders have within them. And um, for me personally, I definitely tend towards more of the feminine energy. Um, you know, I'm, I don't do well with structure. <laughs> I have a hard time like being <laughs> on time. Um, and I realized in order for my own personal evolution, um, I could use some more of that balancing more of that masculine um, reaching and um, initiating because I'm really like open to the receiving 
like my Thanks. my my system is 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 oriented more towards the feminine energy and so i i would really love to find that balance in the way i visualize it when when you look at the yin yang symbol um trying to achieve that um you know 50 50 parity within myself yep. and um hoping that those energies can help other people and help the collective well said yeah it reminds me as you're speaking that uh if our friends in the confederation are to be believed uh each of us have incarnated and reincarnated many 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 yep. many times in this uh, world and density <laughs> meaning and we've been both genders mm -hmm. we have all been male and female and various combinations in previous times and mm -hmm. Um, so finding that balance within maybe that is part of the reason why we incarnated in the gender that we did this time to bring more balance to previous incarnations. Uh, Katrina, any thoughts, reflections to add? Um, I mean, this just makes me realize how much I love talking to a lot of one people because there is such a beauty in each of us, right? And um, it's that it's so easy when you're talking about feminine energy or feminism, anything like that to get, um, and I am guilty of doing this, of going so far the other way of being like, okay, it's time for women to just fully take over everything. And then of you know, this masculine That's good energy. That's too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Madam President. <laughs> um, yes. But, but I think there, it's this beautiful, beautiful thing that we can, when we can actually honor each other's beautiful qualities. Because, yeah. um, I mean, as a mom of a son, I get to see so much of what that masculine energy can bring and how when it's being brought up with such love and light mm -hmm. that it doesn't have to be something that conquers and takes over. It can be something that is, empowering to the world um and so i think it's the beauty of this is that it talks about the history behind it you know and like when quo says the reason why we've had so much masculine energy is all these people have failed before mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe there's that beauty in that having that open heart and it's trying to show that to the more masculine energy indeed yeah thank you for sharing that and uh, yeah, I would imagine everyone who was a parent of a uh, child has the ability to help bring about this balance by how they raise that little entity to balance those male and female energies within themselves. And if they are LGBTQ plus to affirm who they say they are, who they feel that they are mm -hmm. inside. I would like to move ahead and look at another question that we've sort of alluded to, which is how can we help restore balance of male and female energies? This is actually a passage that comes from the same session that we just read from. It uh, comes a little bit later. And Zachary asks another question. Is the cultivation of an attitude of surrender to divine flow useful in healing the divine masculine energy, which has a distortion towards control? I am Quo, and I'm aware of your query, my brother, and you have stated this well, for indeed, the movement into the giving of love, the receiving love, and the adoption of the wider perspective of the feminine energies that are now engulfing this planetary sphere is that type of expression of the self, which is more balanced in its potential for realizing the feminine within each heart and soul that needs to be valued and given primary attention within each conscious seeker of truth. Austin asks, earlier when talking about masculinity and destructive masculinity, you used terms like controlling and talked about domination, saying that those were results of the imbalance of masculinity. And I'm wondering, how would you describe a more balanced masculinity? What sort of terms or concepts could you relate to a positive masculinity? I am Quo and I'm aware of your query, my brother. Indeed, we do not mean to demean the general concept of masculinity. There is much within this concept can be quite helpful to individuals and societies. The masculine concept of reaching and affecting and moving in a certain fashion, various energies that are available for the progress of the society as a whole. 
Therefore, we would suggest that the more balanced expression of masculine energies that reach and affect would be cooperation with those energies of the feminine nature that are able to provide a broader point of view. The masculine reaching is balanced by the feminine suggestion of cooperation, of awaiting the reaching, of rejuvening, rejuvenating those masculine energies which reach and are helpful and hopeful of being able to be replenished by the integration with the feminine energies that are there to receive and to energize, to inspire, and to allow masculine energies to be utilized in a more balanced fashion. There is the joining of the male and the female in the sacred marriage of unity of the one infinite creator that is seen then within all entities so that there is not just one or the other masculine or feminine that is expressed in the entities and the cultures that are affected by expressions of such energies in one way or another at all times. Therefore, we would suggest that the masculine energies that are able to realize they are only half of the solution to the problem <laughs> are those energies which are more intelligent, sensitive, and liable to move forward in a more balanced fashion to allow both individuals and cultures to also gain from this balanced expression of the positive and the negative, the male and the female, and realize the creator within each and within all by this expression. It's a beautiful passage and can't help noting that, you know, the characteristics that they are suggesting of intelligence and sensitivity to, to females are often characters that uh, get made of made fun of when males demonstrate such intelligence or sensitivity. They're uh, insulted by being called gay or something, which is an extremely homophobic way, which I'm thinking that uh, it is time for us to uh, grow out of. Uh, Ashley, did you have any thoughts, reflections on anything from this passage? Or these passages? Let's see, Ashley, I am not hearing you if you are speaking. I think your mic is muted. Do you want to unmute your mic? Uh, yes, I muted myself. Um, I was thinking about the relationship described between the, the masculine in its affecting and initiating and the feminine by providing a broader point of view, um, there seems to be an inherent sense of desire to remain in harmony with creation and with the wholeness of creation in the feminine. And sometimes I feel like the masculine in its expression can overlook that and then get into the controlling aspect of that rather than working in harmony with that which it seeks to affect and and initiate. So I'm just seeing this this very fine dance between the masculine and the feminine energies when it comes to creation. And ultimately, we're designed to be in unity. Um, we're supposed to within and of course with other selves. Nice. Yeah, the word dance comes up so many times in different channeling uh, transcripts. And I think the dance that you're referring to between male and female energies blending here is a really good one. Kind of reminds me of the yin yang symbol of the constant interaction between yin and yang energies, which could be thought of as, as male and, and female. Uh, Aram, did you have any thoughts, reflections on anything here? Yeah, um, I, I think about these energies a lot in, in terms of um, my own efforts to integrate both. And when I, when I you know, read this passage or see this passage, um, I think about the, the process that I go through when um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to seek guidance um, from my higher self or you know, I, I will often um, I feel like the masculine part is the portion where I'm seeking or initiating, um, maybe uh, going into um, a prayerful uh, intention. And then in order to receive 
the the guidance or the information, I really need to um, be still and receptive and, you know, go into a quiet meditative state to actually, um, you know, get the guidance. So, you know, I, I can see that, that process playing out in that, um, and, and, and seeing where it can, um, be utilized in other aspects of my life. Um, you know, the, the reaching initiating, and then, um, not always being in the place of willful control and getting to a point where, okay, um, I've, I've done the stuff and now I have to sit back and, and kind of reap the benefits of the doing. Indeed. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Katrina, anything to add? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I loved the comment about the dance because it is such a beautiful way to describe masculine and feminine energies together. Um, but I also just loved the way that it said, um, joining the male and female in sacred marriage. Like when I first read this, my first time reading it, I, I naturally thought talking about between two entities. And I think that could be, but I think there's also the way to look at at it of like marrying yourself, marrying those entities inside yourself so that it is balanced and loved, um, which then allows that feminine nature to have that broader point of view. I think it's easier if you're balanced between those entities to have that. That's a that beautiful dance. way it's to... It's a beautiful way to, yeah. That's a beautiful <laughs> way to interpret that line. I have not thought of that as being unity within oneself. I was picturing it being two separate male and female entities too. But what you're saying makes perfect sense. Did I cut you off? I mean, Were you uh, still speaking? To... No, 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 no. I think, I think there's both ways to look at it. And I think that that's the beauty of it all is that, you know, mm -hmm. you're the creator and I'm the creator and we're all part of it together. So of course I need to have a love and a balance inside myself and a marriage with inside myself before I'm fully able to help and give in other ways. Indeed. Yeah, and this is why I love having these conversations so much, because people always point out things and ways of looking at things that I had never thought of and never would have thought of. And hopefully uh, our viewers who are watching this right now are getting something uh, useful out of that as, as well. Uh, Michelle, did you have any thoughts, reflections to share on this? Yeah, sure. I'm going to echo the beauty part about dance and that's one thing I love about Quo I think the passages are long but a lot of them are very poetic um, and it's heart-centered I, I love it um, for myself I've just been really thinking about you know you know greater awareness of where I am in the moment and being present in the moment and thinking oh is this a doing moment or a being moment and I've had to really reflect and sit in silence and think um, all of you have kind of alluded to that. It's like going, you know, to that space to to really be. And what does that mean to just rest in it and 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 just be instead of do? <laughs> so um, yeah, I do that dance with myself um, just internally, and I do the dance I feel in my interaction and my lived experiences, and um, I'm just fully becoming more aware of what that is, and like, oh, is that that energy there, or, you know, I, I think it's all in the matter of intent and how we express that. Um, and I think that there's beauty in all of it, but, you know, I think a couple of times this week, as I was reflecting and, and, and listening to this, I'm like, I think I'm going to practice the feminine mode and just into it and listen. <laughs> um, I have learned, um, to really grow and just trust and listen to my intuition more. I mean, my logical other side of my brain would kind of question some of those things. Um, but I just love this to be able to have the freedom to sit in that. And it's very powerful for that energy to be intuitive. And um, we have a, a beautiful feminine power and this planet absolutely needs it. Um, and um, I think I love my colleagues and friends and family members and you on the call that are raising um uh boys you know or children that are outwardly um present as boys in that loving energy because it's just really it's just so important 
Um, and I just think it's beautiful. We all have the same heart. So yeah, it's just me that balancing between doing and being and what does that mean for, for me? Well said, thank you. Ah, uh, it does remind me that uh, another way that we can help restore and balance is to uh, pray for Mother Earth, meditate for Mother Earth, which would be a good time to bring up the Gaia meditations uh, mm -hmm. in case you were not aware of this. Uh, if you go to the LNL research website and uh, click on connect and scroll down to the bottom of the page, you will find a little bit of information on Gaia meditations or meditations from Mother Earth. This is actually something that started about 20 some years ago. It was right after the attacks on the World Trade Center on 9-11 that the channeling group asked uh, what they could do to help bring about peace uh, for the planet. And it was suggested that doing group meditations was a very good way to help uh, the power of people united in meditation and prayer uh, has a multiplying effect that's called the law of squares. So they started doing this about 20 some years ago, and they have been doing it pretty much every day since then. So they do actually start at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time which would be 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. You could use a, I believe actually, if you go to that website and look below the part that's circled, there is a link to a time zone converter you can see, uh, can look at to see what time that would be in your area. And yeah, I will say that I do use a phone alarm. I have a phone alarm that's set to go off at 3.29 p.m. each day for me. And it's a reminder to take a few minutes I don't usually spend more than five or 10 minutes at most in that meditation, but I'm oming and I'm praying for Mother Earth for world peace and for graceful transition into fourth density, asking uh, all angelic beings uh, from all dimensions to come in and uh, shine that light on Earth and to, to help. So that is something I would encourage uh, everyone to do if you feel so inclined. Uh, otherwise, I did want to go ahead and look at another passage to look at the question of why is the divine feminine needed now in particular? Uh, at this point, uh, let's see. This was from a session not that long ago. This was just in 2022. And I believe this was at the Prague gathering, the coming home gathering or the uh, LNL gathering that happened in Prague, Czech Republic. The group question was, why is the divine feminine needed at this time during the harvest of planet Earth? At this time, it might be worth uh, noting what harvest actually refers to. Harvest, you could say, is the process of making the leap from one density to the next. And it happens for both individuals and planetary populations as a collective or group. So as you can see, uh, humans being at third density, each person has the ability to be harvested or to graduate to make the leap from third density to fourth density at the end of their incarnation, shall we say. But there are in fact graduation requirements. So the requirement for an individual person at third density, the whole point of it is to choose between two paths known as service to others or STO or service to self abbreviated STS. Service to others just basically means seeing the creator and not just in yourself, but in all other selves. And it means reaching a state of consciousness or vibration where you have learned to grow beyond just thinking of yourself. And it's about thinking of others, maybe a little bit more than yourself, let's just say 51%. So you could say that is the graduation requirement for a person to make the leap from third density, fourth density, to achieve a vibrational state where they are thinking of the welfare of others at least 51% of the time. But it is also true that one could be harvested or graduate to fourth density on the path that is known as service to self. And that means not really seeing the creator in anyone other than yourself. Um, and that means to graduate to fourth density on that path. <laughs> 
you have to be at least 95% service to self, meaning you are achieving a state of uh, um, consciousness where you are not thinking of anybody else more than like 5% of the time and you're only focused on yourself and on maybe controlling others to meet your own needs 95% of the time. Our friends at the Confederation have said that both paths are equally valid. It's not that service to self is worse or morally, morally less than the service to others path, because if all is one and the creator is in one, then they're both valid paths. You're either taking the service to self path to explore unconditional love for yourself and nobody else, or you're graduating to fourth density positive uh, uh, seeing the creator and all uh, others at least 51% of the time. But it is also possible for the planet to graduate or to make that harvest for human population as a whole to make a choice of either dedicating itself towards service to others known as the positive path or service to self on the negative path. And so far we as a planet have a hard, had a hard, have had a hard time moving the needle as it was as a collective one way or the other because the majority of people prefer the surface to others path they prefer living in a world of love and kindness to hate and fear and war but there are entities here who are in fact trying to graduate on the surface to self path so there is this continual tug of war the moving the needle back and forth and having a hard time graduating in that sense or harvesting that is where this question is coming through that we're looking at again the question is why is the divine feminine needed at this time during the harvest of planet earth Quo says, your question for this evening is indeed a very prescient and important question, for it combines two elements of your current exist experience upon this planet and highlights an integral aspect between these two elements, that is, that which is known as the divine feminine and the time upon your planet currently being experienced called the harvest. Indeed, as the question insightfully points out, the divine feminine, that primal aspect of the creator, is incredibly integral in this process of harvest. As we speak to this concept of the divine feminine, we ask that you release any strict conceptualizations of what this may mean, including any ideas of how the divine feminine may manifest in your current time. For we find upon your planet that the realization of the divine feminine and the divine masculine have been very confused, and it is indeed this confusion that much healing may take place. The process of harvest is one that has many aspects among individuals, among groups, among your entire planetary population and within the planet itself. We may draw your attention to the aspect of the divine feminine that is manifest within your space time, known to you as your mother earth, or as she is known in other ways, Gaia or Terra. In attempting to understand how the divine feminine is related to the process of harvest at this time, we would ask you to examine your planetary population's relationship with the divine being of planet Earth and how your unrealized social memory complex has developed a distorted relationship with this planet. For it is within this relationship that you may view the particular distortions of your realization of the divine feminine. There is much exploitation. There is much harm. There is much healing to be done within this realm. It is indeed the planet itself which will birth the fourth density, and we ask you to consider this process of gestation and birth given to the divine feminine and how your mother earth has prompted an environment for you at this time to experience the third density and to go as a being in the womb to develop a sense of individuality of purpose and direction as individuals and as a population. This process of third density is akin to that gestation period within the womb. And indeed, it has been a difficult period for your planet and for your population. But as fourth density approaches, opportunities to realize and accentuate these distortions given to your planet itself are becoming more and more available. And within this realization, there is the light of fourth density, which is the light of love itself, of unconditional love and understanding. And it is through these aspects of fourth density that your planet may come into a more proper relationship with its population as the population comes to reconcile the diff difficult aspects of that relationship. It is an essential and necessary aspect of the harvest at this time 
that these distortions be realized and healed. And it is through this healing that the birth of fourth density may take place. The planetary aspect of the divine feminine and the harvest is but one among many that may be explored. I apologize to anyone who really wasn't expecting to go through this much reading. Sometimes we have short passages, sometimes we have long passages, but this whole session was so beautiful. I, uh, I already edited it for brevity, and this is about the shortest I could get. So I would like to say that, yeah, I, I think the thing that stands out to me most in this passage uh, is this part about um, much exploitation, much harm. Mm -hmm. There is much healing to be done within this realm, certainly in looking at uh, trying to uh, balance the male and female energies. I think it would be fair to say it's the male energies that really have caused mm -hmm. so much exploitation, so much harm, so much plundering and pillaging and destruction to the planet as a whole. So just looking at a relationship to Mother Earth and trying to reassess that and trying to maybe clean up the karma of all the destruction we've done, not just to this planet, but to the previous planets mm -hmm. that were rendered uninhabitable or blown to bits. I think this is part of the lesson that so many have come to learn on this planet, how to have a more healthy, uh, less toxic disregard for our uh, planet that we live on. Uh, Aram, did you have any thoughts, reflections on anything from this passage so far? Yeah, the thing that strikes me, um, how we make the transition from third density to fourth density is um, unconditional love or having that unconditional love, not only for yourself, but for um, the other. And in fourth density, it feels like we, you know, when you don't have the veil and you can clearly see and feel that the other is actually um, you, <laughs> or there's no separation between you and the other. And, and we're all um, an aspect of the creator. Um, it feels like that won't be a problem, but because, you know, we, we don't see that or feel that fully yet, um, you know, we're kind of cleaning up the distortions that have accumulated over you know, the last 75,000 years. And um, I, I really feel like, you know, the service to self path requires that you completely close off your heart. And I can see that, you know, um, when you have endless war, you know, this, re this repetitive cycle of like, you know, harm and retribution, you, you actually, have to have your heart closed in order to to enact violence on someone else or take someone else's life and you know the way we we start to move away from that cycle is to recognize the the other as ourselves and to feel that love for ourselves that that same love we feel for ourselves we feel for the other well said that's a good point yeah, they have said that fourth density is the density of love and understanding. And as I think he suggested, that is really the key to making that leap, that graduation, that harvest from third density to fourth density is unconditional love for others on the service to others path and unconditional love for self on the service to self path, which they said is, again, an equally valid path, which is really frustrating for, for so many of us, I think. Katrina, did you have any thoughts, reflections to add? I did. And Rama, I think that was beautiful how you put that, you know, how much we need to love others and see see ourselves and each other because it's so true. Um, but what stood out to me the most in this was the process of third density is akin to that gestation period within the womb. Um, I had two pregnancies and one was extremely difficult and I was in and out of the hospital all the time and I mean it did a lot of damage to my body and um but it just I didn't as soon as I held my child after it was it didn't matter that all of that pain and everything and and it made me have such a new appreciation for mother earth for Gaia that you know she knows that she is bringing this gestation of fourth density right and she's She's giving up, we, you know, she's being exploited and harmed in the process, much like a human woman is when this baby is using her womb, right? And um, 
it was just a beautiful reminder of that, you know, that we, there is love at the end of all of this. Beautiful, indeed, well said. Uh, Michelle, anything to add? Yeah, I, I love everything, both Katrina and Ron, what you've said. Um, for me, this just, I just love this passage and it really, we really need to love the earth and take care of the earth. It is a living being and um, that energy and that creation is important and we're here for a really purpose. You know, we're all one and we're here for a purpose. And I, I for one, would not want this planet blown to bits like Malbec and Mars. Um, so I think for me, when I read this passage, just really instill, it's just, it, we just have a really beautiful opportunity and special role to protect this planet. And, you know, there's both amazing, beautiful things going on on the earth and we're just tearing it apart to and others. It's just, you know, um, it's just really important. So for me, this just affirms all of the conversations around, you know, how we are protecting, you know, second density souls on the planet and the plants and the rocks and the, all the things. It's all important. And um, yeah, Mother Gaia. Um, and I think it's really awesome that, you know, the earth is moving in fourth density <laughs> faster than we are. So yeah. Um, yeah, it will be really interesting, you know, to see or to experience what that fourth density is. You know, there's this conversation around, well, we have a body. Is it a light body? Um, but it is a special time that we are. And it, you know, when you reflect on it, it seems perfect sense that, you know, the analogy between the earth and the womb and the creation, and the growth and energy, it just really clicks for me. I just love this channel material. It just feels intuitively um connected to the creator in that way it feels like truth to me indeed me too yeah and again it is a good reminder that everything we've been reading came through the process of channeling the persons who were channeling this did not know what they were saying these were just the words that came to them in deep 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 meditation in trying to make shall we say telepathic contact with this entity known as Quo. So this was uh, the main question that was asked at this particular gathering in Prague. So they actually talked quite a bit more at length. And uh, again, I did actually want to read through this whole thing further to better understand why the divine feminine is needed now in particular at this time. So um, I think we lost Ashley there. I believe she'll be joining us again shortly. Otherwise, let's uh, go ahead and continue. Quo says, we imagine that those on this planet at this time are encountered frequently with instances of this energetic imbalance, the closing of the heart, the distancing of self from other self, the energetic investment into ego. Indeed, this was a, how you may call calculated or purposeful move on the part of the creation, as every moment, every experience acts as an opportunity for growth, for further knowing self, for further knowing other self, and for further realizing the creatorship of all. Hence, when we speak of this need for the divine feminine, it is that need for the open heart, the need for the nurturing self, the need for the nurturing of other self, as you have pointed out. And though that action itself may seem extraordinarily small in the scale of a whole populational harvest, it is those tiny micro movements that act in fact as beacons as lighthouses for inspiration, as vibrational positive transfers between aspects of the creation. So we see that the healing of the heart, the healing of the self, what the self sees as identity, the pains and trauma that come with the self is very much of great import at this time. For then that healing can traverse the space between the self and other self to allow the healing of the aspect of the illusion which you call relationship. And with this action, one heart opens yet another and opens another and another multiplying. When the intention is set towards this healing of imbalance, the letting go of control, the full acceptance of everything, then you may see the clear channel, not only of us tiny aspects of the creator, 
but the creation itself as a whole. We ask you to imagine yourself as a mother tending to her child. As you walk this planet, as you dance within this illusion, we encourage you to operate with the open heart, open arms, the gentle touch, and the desire to serve and nurture the other self. It is through that dynamic that the, what you may call reality of this experience may discover the true interconnectedness and unity of all things. The realization that the hand outreaching is the same as the hand that grasps. Once those connections are established and fortified and fully embodied, so then may the heart of not just the self, but the planet be full, the experience be primed, and the space be advantageous for this massive growth, this step in evolution. Every entity in this group holds the potential to be that lighthouse, that spark of inspiration, that source of connection for another seeker on the path, for another self navigating this experience. And we wish to remind each that that position is one which each and every one of you is absolutely worthy of standing proud within. For each individual light shines so beautifully, so purely, so brightly. And as we have expressed, it is an immense moment of joy to witness the working of this circle and the almost effortless blending of energy which has occurred during this, or rather that which you call this law of one gathering. Each time the heart opens as you relate to one another, it is as if a light has become brighter. And though metaphysically not visible to your physical eyes, it is quite apparent to us and to all who may witness these workings from beyond your space-time realm. We witness and cherish this as we do many such workings around your planet. It's such a beautiful thing to imagine that these words are coming from an extraterrestrial entity from another, shall we say, planet. Mm -hmm. So many times when we think of, um, you know, the possibility that there's life elsewhere in the planet, whenever we see interactions with extraterrestrial entities in the movies, it's always like a hostile invasion or something like that, that we have to defend ourselves from. And that's one thing that I always appreciate so much in reading these channeling sessions, the understanding belief that, oh, well, not only are we not alone, but we've actually made contact with extraterrestrial entities dating back mm -hmm. to the 1980s and earlier than that. And they're not only not hostile, they're really beautiful, positive entities who are trying to help us in our own spiritual growth and evolution. It's a beautiful thing. And I love this passage where we're, they're referring to one opening heart leading to another, leading to another, and so on. It makes me think of one flower in a field blooming, which somehow triggers off other flowers to bloom. Or if you've ever seen The Lord of the Rings, the, <laughs> the third movie, the beacons that are lit uh, mm -hmm. as uh, uh, Gondor <laughs> is calling for aid and one beacon, one bonfire built on one mountaintop is seen on another mountaintop and that caused them to light their beacons and it kind of continues this uh, communication. Uh, that's kind of the image that comes to mind. That's really beautiful. Uh, uh, Katrina, any thoughts, reflections on anything here? Um, You know, I, it's just so beautiful, really, in all honesty, but I think it, it's interesting to me that you bring up that um, it's always been portrayed when you have alien contact that it's going to be violent and a takeover. And I think that that's an example of why we need divine feminine energy, right, is because that that mindset is more the conquer and control mindset not in a negative way if you can balance it with positive but our um our population tends to have not balanced it right so then there becomes this fear instead of just accepting people for and seeing the love in each person and um i would imagine that most people even people who have um children who are different or struggle are probably um and maybe aren't as accepted in our world uh understand this even more that like it's it's not aliens that might hurt us <laughs> it's us that might hurt us mm -hmm. um, for sure so, yeah. yeah i don't know i just think it's a beautiful thing when you start <laughs> thinking about when you actually look at each individual as each heart can open another heart um it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. 
really beautiful and really inspiring. Uh, Michelle, any thoughts, reflections? Yeah. To that? Um, one of the words, you know, like this is channel material, but the words used, so the micro movements, I just love that word. I'm like, yeah, because I feel I myself can get overwhelmed and just, you know, the toxic masculinity energy, you know, and I just, you know, I, I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, you know, just, you know, violence and, um, and it's like, what can we do about all the things and what can we do about the planet? So it can get overwhelming. So I, I, I love this word about micro movements and a little bit and a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, um, which is the flip side of microaggression. So I just, I just really love that word. And I don't know why I hadn't heard it before. Definitely microaggression, but not micro movement. Um, but I, I had not I even really picked up on that, uh, the word in this passage. Uh, yeah. Again, that's so cool. It picked and up. And it was on. encouraging. It's like, you know, you do the bright light and the beacon a little bit here and there, because there's a lot. And I believe in this passage and other passages, even Ross says this, but even Quo, you know, we're not going to be able to solve all the things. I don't get that impression that we're going to solve all the things. There's a, there's a, spiritual or journey progression that the souls have and our purpose here and going back to the creator and our service to others and we're all one um and yeah it was just helpful for just when there's overwhelm and there's just a lot of negativity on this planet and i just i i feel like um i'll just get political here but i just think that um a really good demonstration of feminine energy was last night at the debate and I'm just going to say it. I just think that Kamala, that was a great example of amazing feminism. We should note at this point, at the time of recording, the presidential <laughs> debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris yeah, happened yeah, just last yeah, night. Yeah. An amazing masculine. So I just, I work right now. Um, I'm in a lot of environments for my work life and my volunteer work, where there are, there's a lot of women. There's a lot of feminine energy and it's amazing. It is amazing. Um, and there's balance there and sometimes we're unbalanced. Um, but I think it's something, it's something to be cherished, you know, especially since this planet has a history of not valuing feminine energy and women, outwardly women. So I think it's something to be praised. And yeah, I think we're awesome. <laughs> we'll bring a lot sure. to the planet. It is time for that. So. Yes, electing the first <laughs> female president of the United States in the history of this country it might be a nice, nice significant step in the it's about the time. What? <laughs> I'm sure. Well past beyond time. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, Aram or uh, Ashley, are you there? Is your mic working? Um, my my mic is working, but um, uh, is your yes. camera working? Can you can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, I don't know if you yeah. were able to follow everything in this particular passage. I can come back to you later if you want some more you time. You can. You can come back. Sounds good. Uh, Aram, any thoughts, reflections on anything from this part? Yeah, um, I just, I mean, similar to your beacon analogy, it just feels like, you know, it this this concept of paying it forward, like when you when you're able to, you know, um, feel compassion and serve another, you know, through your heart, through an open heart, um, through unconditional love, uh, in, in a very small, but significant way, you're helping to heal that other person and simultaneously healing yourself. And that just spreads from person to person. And it's a, you know, the, the more we can repeat that, um, you know, the more it will, it'll grow like a wildfire. For sure. And I like where they're talking about the healing of trauma. That's where this comes in. And I think it's an interesting way if you look at anyone in your friends or family circles who are going through really difficult times with family members or friends to know that when one person heals that trauma or heals the hurt in relationship, that's the flower blooming that they're talking about. That's the, what helps us to um, 
move us into fourth density and helps us to balance those male female energies. Uh, um, why don't we go ahead and read on to the next section? It is this type of work which makes a way for the healing of the feminine within the self and within the collective. For if one studies that known to you as history, at least those recorded portions thereof, one sees not just a story of events and empires, migrations and so forth, but one sees one of our universe's most fundamental polarities in action, that being the fluid, dynamic, ever-shifting ratio and tension between the masculine and feminine. And what characterizes your particular planetary people story, at least among its dominant cultures, is a story and wherein the feminine has been subjugated, exploited, suppressed, and feared by those of your peoples. We have watched the technologies change over your centuries and millennia, from fist to sticks and stones to swords to gunpowder and to your more digital-based technologies. All expressions of this great conflict of imbalance between the masculine and the feminine. Yours is a story as a collective with many, many exceptions on an individual level and in pockets of cultures in society. But in the main, the story of imbalances between these two fundamental energies, these energies in proper proportion and balance, which differ for each individual are sacred when understood. There is no inherent taint in the masculine principle. There is only rather its destructive, harmful qualities when it has come out of balance with a feminine principle or toxic masculinity, I believe, as Michelle referred to it earlier. Uh, Quo goes on to say, in terms of that which may begin to heal this imbalance and to restore that which has been suppressed of the feminine within you, there are many ways unique to each individual in each culture. There are, however, some central principles which we may suggest for your attention. They include and perhaps begin with listening. For as we have said, what yeah. characterizes the masculine and feminine at its root is that it seek that which seeks for the masculine and that which awaits the seeking for the feminine. Inherent in that feminine quality, which is inherent in all beings, is this quality of receptivity, of receiving, of not embarking upon a desire to penetrate the unknown, to bring back insight and understanding, or to configure one's environment to a vision of one's liking, but rather to await with humility and sensitivity that which is always speaking to you. It is this quality of listening, which is necessarily an honoring of the feminine within you and of your subconscious resources. One who is not in a state of listening feels that they perhaps have the right answer that they need not pay attention, that this imbalance may lead to imposition and infringement. But one who is listening is recognizing that there is an intelligence greater than their own, that they are but a vessel or instrument for a will greater than that of their conscious mind and their conscious drives. Uh, I wanted to stop and go back and talk about that part at the very beginning. Uh, what culture characterizes your particular planetary people story, at least among its dominant cultures, is a story in wherein the feminine has been subjugated, exploited, suppressed, and feared by those of your people. Certainly the thing that comes most to my mind is uh, some service to self entities. One could say their unending desire to control the reproductive systems and sexual lives of uh, women. It is a really, really, um, well, obviously a hot social issue for us as a, as a culture, but really, uh, again, this uh, a great example of this dynamic between the male mm -hmm. uh, need or desire to subjugate female energies uh, in this way. Uh, Michelle, did you have any thoughts on that or anything else from this passage? Oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to the shadow side. So I'll just say, again, as I mentioned earlier, it's just, uh, you know, just heartache at some of the experiences that other selves are experiencing. And myself um, have also had experiences where um, toxic masculinity was, it was a catalyst. And um, I will say it helped to accelerate my, continued spiritual growth 
So in essence, you know, in terms of how we live and learn and service to self and others, that was an example in that period of my life where I really need to go deep, really deep. Um, but yeah, it's just, um, I feel the way out of it is through the heart chakra. I, I um, think our other selves and other souls, they have heart, they have love and beauty there beneath all of that. So, you know, again, back to the analogy we were saying earlier about the beacons and the micro movements, just a little bit of compassion, you know, and a little bit of healing helps. But certainly there's just some horrific examples and there's some beautiful examples too. So of great balance and um, beautiful masculinity. And I must say um, on the flip side of, of negative feminine energy, um, you know, as we talk about the imbalance in one, there's an imbalance in other. And so the nurturing and the self, you know, the self love and the caring, and I'm thinking, ah, huh, what are those negative feminine energy qualities, right? Like what would those be and how does that manifest in myself um, with experience with others? So it's just a lot of reflect here. These are all very heady pieces, <laughs> these passages. For sure. And I appreciate your diplomacy around this uh, particular matter of, uh, let's just call it the abortion debate and the struggle for control of women's reproductive uh, rights. Yeah, it is definitely easy to look at it uh, from the STO side as being horrific, the the efforts that have been made to uh, control women's reproductive systems to such a degree. Um, uh, and now apparently birth control is, is, is up for, for, for debate even. Or but control I control women in general too, just for I'm sure. And I guess that's what helps me look at this maybe without allowing myself to get triggered or angry about mm -hmm. it quite as much as I used to. Yeah. And that's maybe just realizing again, it's this interplay, not just between male and female energies and trying to find balance, but it is that tug of war between service mm -hmm. to self and service to others mm -hmm. entities that we refer to where all of these efforts to control women's reproductive rights or really could just be seen as service to self entities doing what they do. That is part of that path mm -hmm. is um, not recognizing free will choices in others and not re uh, recognizing creator in other selves, but in, in fact, trying to control and manipulate others is specifically the key to, to the path of uh, service to self. So I guess if I just look at it, oh, okay, well, that's them doing what they do. And as I was doing <laughs> what we do, it's like, oh, okay, let's see how this goes. <laughs> Uh, Ram, any thoughts, reflections on this issue or anything else from the past? Yeah, I have a lot of thoughts. Um, uh, when I think about the suppression and subjugation and control of women, I think about um, how in the past, you know, um, religions actually murdered women, um, you know, who were closer to nature, closer to their feminine um, aspects, you know, actually had abilities of receptivity and, you know, because of it were, were feared and subsequently murdered. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I really think the reason why is because um, the, the men who, who, did these things were cut off from their own feminine nature. Like mm -hmm. they didn't realize that they have their own ability to tap into that feminine energy of receptivity and unconditional love. And they're so cut off from it that, um, you know, and they feared, feared it so much that they had to um, control women instead of um, working with women and balancing that masculine feminine within themselves. And um, as, as a culture, I feel like collectively, both men and women have been um, conditioned to be more in their masculine. If you want to, you know, succeed in, in society, you have to be, um, use your personal will and, and cut yourself off from your feminine. And um, so I think, 
you know, in order to um, achieve that balance, I think both men and women need to um, find their feminine um, energy. And I, I think of, um, you know, two, two men in particular who were really, who feel, felt like they mastered this was like Prince and David Bowie, like, you know, <laughs> the, the creative aspect that flowed through them, you know, was like both, both masculine and feminine. And, you know, you, I don't know, there, you have to be open and receptive, receptive to be inspired, you know, and find the muse and, and let the creator flow through you. That That's it. <laughs> You are just waiting to bring Prince and David <laughs> Bowie into the conversation. Aren't you? Those are great examples. Uh, again, I hadn't yeah. really thought of that, but yeah, great examples of that balancing of male and female energies in a very creative way, for sure. Katrina, any thoughts, reflections to add? Um, I just think I try to look at every situation with intent of... Um, that most people try to be good people, right? Even, you know, as, and so I think, I think it's hard for someone who, for this toxic masculinity energy, they, they haven't listened, right? Like, as it talks about that we need to listen, they haven't listened to that feminine energy enough to understand, I think their fear is, is, is that if we do balance, if we do make things more equal, that then we're going to do to them what they've done to us for so long, right? But that's, that's not feminine energy. I mean, I'm not saying that there aren't female people who have done that, but I think that that's more in connection with their masculine side. And um, so it's, it's understanding that there is a fear that there's going to be retaliation. And so when you put fear in place, I think that that's, um, people are going to hold on tighter. And so it's just having that compassion to that they're super scared of what strong, well-spoken, mm -hmm. confident women are going to be able to do because they, <laughs> they know what we already had to fight to get there. And so um, they know that we would be capable of doing it, but, but it's not our heart. Right. Um, I mean, it, Alanis Morissette actually said, have women in charge and we'll take care of everyone. Like it, it is such a, a part of feminine energy is to take care of and to nurture. And it's not just take care of our own, but it's to take care of the planet, to take care of each other, to listen, to um, have more a cooperative mindset of things. And that doesn't align with exploiting and suppressing and controlling, you know? So um, I can, I can, I guess I'm just saying, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with the side. I just have compassion for the fear that they must have you know, and I think, for them to be fighting back so much. I think part of that fear might be just a matter of not wanting to lose control, not a, a patriarchal system not really wanting to lose control of the pay arc, yeah, right. patriarchy, not wanting to share power. I suppose in a lot of ways, it's the same way uh, perhaps uh, uh, white people don't really want to give power and share power to black or brown skinned people because they've okay. really enjoyed living in a society that's really <laughs> uh, tilted in, in their favor. And again, it really just comes down to power and Perhaps it's fair to say that those who are polarized more towards service to self are going to keep fighting to keep their hold on power and really are not never going to particularly want to let go of it. But I think there are more and more people who are consciously or unconsciously polarized towards service to others who do recognize the need for uh, releasing, for getting rid of the power structure as it is. And uh, uh, balancing those energies more with women and empowering women and empowering girls more as well as perhaps people of uh, color. Hey, uh, why don't we go ahead and finish up this session? I don't remember where exactly we left off, but probably somewhere near the end, I believe. 
Uh, here they are saying we do not mean to imply non-action. We mean to imply a humble awaiting and listening from a place of receptivity to that which wants to be born. And we assure you that whatever your position in society, reinforced as it is by the sense that you can do little to affect the outcome of trends and forces and politics and governments greater than yourself, each has a critical role to play. You would not be here if you had no part to play. And that role is, first and foremost, that which transpires not on the outer planes of your actions, but within the sanctum of your own heart. Wherever you may find your body, in this city, in your bedroom, at the workplace, fourth density is born, shall we say, in your chest, where your true power resides to create change in this world, which is to say, to change yourself by allowing, by trusting, by taking time to set aside your preconceived notions and your plans about what should be done and what needs to be done, and by listening. And as you change your heart, or shall we say, heal your heart, and allow the layers and the burdens that you have carried for so long to fall away, light shines through you, not by virtue of a particular feat or some particular talent, but because you are discovering who you really are. You are discovering that you are the one. You are that which made this. You are that which chose to forget. And what you really are that you might play the game of returning to that which you never left. And in this return and in this allowing, light shines through your mind body spirit complex not the light of your personality per se which is its own light but the light of the creator we move toward concluding through this instrument by reminding you that fourth density is not something that happens to you but rather happens through you fourth density is waiting right now to be born and it is born only when those upon your planet are ready to release their resistance their war and their ideas and cooperate with his energy. Fundamental to this is a rebalancing and healing of the ma feminine masculine ratio and the cherishing and the honoring and uplifting of that which has been suppressed and feared and conquered seemingly, that being the divine feminine of which each is unique representation. I love the overall message of this part, uh, which is that this really isn't about changing the world and it's not about necessarily political uh, solutions. It's really about each person healing within themselves. Um, mm -hmm. As uh, Quo has said so many other times in other channeling sessions, if you really want to heal the world, the best way is to heal within, heal those traumas that we talked about before. And, find that balancing of male and female energies within yourself is the best way. Uh, uh, Katrina, any thoughts, reflections on any of this? I, I mean, I just love what you just said, that it is about healing ourselves. Um, I mean, obviously we don't have control over anyone else's healing process, um, <laughs> but I think it's also, um, I think it's also about by healing ourselves, creating a world in which there's fewer traumas, right? Um, so that we're not, it's not taking people as long to have to try to get to being at a place where they can heal themselves because they're starting off in a safer and secure place. And so, um, yeah, I think, I think it's just important to remember that to have that place in our world is as we heal, then we are being able to create healing for others as well. Um, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing, you know? It's I feel like just as, just as trauma can be generational, I feel like healing can be as well. And so I think it's thinking of it that way. That's a beautiful way to think about it. Thank you. Uh, Aram, anything to add? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm raising a boy. I have a son and, you know, um, he, He's very emotional and, you know, as a mother, I allow him to express his emotions fully, you know, whether it's sadness or anger. Um, and I think part of the healing for the masculine is to um, tap into the vulnerability and the, um, you know, the, the emotional side of themselves. And Jonathan, I love it when you... 
<laughs> when you are vulnerable and and you know cry in our meetings it's so beautiful to witness because um yeah i think just for you know eons um you know the male gender has been um cut off from their emotions and um been discouraged in, in expressing all of their emotions and their full self and you know part of of i think finding um healing for for the collective is encouraging um and embracing uh full expression of all emotions for sure well said yeah, and I did want to note that, yeah, a big part of this also, I think, can be finding a spiritual community you can be part of. And um, yeah, indeed, the uh, Seattle Love One group that meets on Tuesday afternoons and Saturday mornings, we've got a nice group of people, always new folks coming in or folks uh, going out for a little while. But yeah, I think we've developed enough trust uh, in each other and built those relationships enough that, yeah, um, a lot of folks do feel comfortable opening their heart and being a little vulnerable and sharing some personal stories that might be uh, leading to, to tears as well. And I really feel thankful that I have a group of friends that I can do that with and not have problems with. So that was my long way of encouraging the viewers. If there was anybody who's still <laughs> watching at this point, uh, yeah, go to the LNL research page, click on the connect tab, find the list of all the study groups uh, around uh, the world and they all have a different vibe and uh, go to different groups, find a group that matches your vibe. And I think you will find that uh, a lot of progress can be made for, for you that really can't be done by yourself. Michelle, did you have any uh, thoughts on this last passage before we start winding things down? Yeah, I would just say I love the phrase earlier about intergenerational healing. And, you know, it starts um, individually and healing to the next person. It's like a ripple effect. So it's collective and both individual. And um, I love this passage. I, you know, got a little misty eyed to just about this amazing opportunity and experience we're having here and love of the creator that we're here to heal and to be that beacon um, and to really see us in everything, plants and rocks and trees and mother earth and other humans. And we do know that hurt people hurt people and everybody needs love. So I'm just sitting with that and um, just really grateful for the opportunity to be on the planet at this time and have um, the group of the law of one and all of you souls just to nerd out on some of this, talk about aliens and extraterrestrials and the infinite creator. I love it. <laughs> and social memory complexes and all mind, body, spirit complexes <laughs> and all that nerdy shit. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it has been a joy. Uh, as we bring this session to a close, just want to take a look at where do we go from here? Uh, from this whole hour and a half long info dump that we've had, uh, what are some takeaway lessons that might consider? One, for sure, cultivate energies of love and understanding. Uh, it would appear, if uh, the words of Quo and our friends in the Confederation, Confederation being all of these groups of extraterrestrial entities, apparently there are hundreds of them that have uh, grouped together in order to help civilizations like us grow and evolve spiritually. Uh, if they are to believe, then fourth density, the next level of evolution for people uh, is about love and understanding and that unconditional love. So cultivating energies of uh, uh, unconditional love, uh, both for yourself and for others, is a really big part of making that transition into the future. Uh, second of all, listening, as we said, the feminine energies of listening and receiving, listening to your intuitions, listening to the voices, uh, the nature spirits around you, listening to women and listening to girls and listening to the feminine perspectives to balance out the male would be a great thing. And supporting women's reproductive rights. If you are on the service to others path, if you have chosen the path of service to others, then that really does, I would think, and I believe I'm speaking for the panelists here, meaning support of, uh, supporting the rights of women to have control over their own bodies and their own reproductive choices. And lastly, as our friends of the Confederation have said, 
we're not really here to change the world. Uh, we're here to love it as it is. And the best way to heal the world is really to heal your traumas and heal your uh, hurts inside. And it's not just a cute saying for Hallmark cards. It really is a metaphysical truth that when you heal yourself inside, when you learn how to love unconditionally, those who you find hardest to love unconditionally, the whole world changes and you do change the world. And that echoes out to all creation. And that is a really, really beautiful thing to remember. Uh, Aram, uh, uh, any last thoughts, reflections on any of this before we have a little pop quiz? Yeah, um, my last thoughts are, yes, um, service to others. Um, if you don't want to polarize negatively, you do not infringe on others' free will. So, you know, like acceptance and not control. Um, and yeah, uh, I also want to stress that um, when you heal yourself, it's you're you're in a position where you can help others heal. Indeed, well said. Uh, uh, Michelle, any last thoughts, reflections? Yeah, just that listening, listen, just that stillness and the quiet and the listen and to, to receptivity, it's, it's beautiful. And um, just nurturing that is really critical to knowing yourself and loving yourself. So thank you. Uh, Katrina? Uh, yeah, I mean, I love that you put all of this at the end um, because they're all such beautiful things. Um, I think when you love and understand, it's way easier to listen, right? And uh, I think as women, a lot of times from the time we're very, very little, we're taught to not listen to our intuition, not listen to our higher selves trying to tell us things. And as we go down this path, part of healing is learning how to trust that again and know what it is and it's a beautiful beautiful thing when it happens so um no matter where you identify on the gender realm that's right you can bring that piece to you and it's balancing that feminine energy and masculine mm -hmm. energy in yourself well said beautiful uh, it looks like we lost Ashley a little while ago. I think she was having internet connectivity issues. So she is not here right now, has not been here for a little while, and we will hope to try again on a future episode. Otherwise, panelists, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your thoughts and reflections and opinions. It has been a joy, and I hope it has not been a total waste of time for whoever is still watching at this point. But for those of you who are still watching, we do have a special treat for you today, and that is, of course, the pop quiz. Pop quiz, of course, was a term that uh, Carla used often to refer to the little tests that come up uh, in the course of our daily rounds to see if we have, in fact, learned the lessons that we came here to learn in this incarnation. Here, we just like to use pop quizzes to add a little bit of fun and levity to the end of our otherwise serious discussions, and maybe bring a little bit of pop culture into the conversations. So panelists, uh, you obviously know a fair bit about the power of the divine feminine, but how much do you know about some of the most powerful female divas in pop music? I'm going to ask you three questions, multiple choice, about some of the biggest pop music divas uh, in the biz this day. Let's see how many you can answer correctly. As usual, the points don't matter. If you had fun, you won. And if you learned something new and interesting and fun about pop culture that you can drop into future conversations with friends or families, then you won also. Panelists, are you ready for your first question? Sure. Yes. All yeah. right. Your first question is about Beyonce, basically the diva of pop music divas. Uh, she does hold the record for the most Grammy wins, 32. But according to her, her lucky number is which of the following? Is it A, 4, B, 7, or C, 11? If you know the answer, don't tell us. Just give your guess like everybody else. Otherwise, I try to pick questions that I didn't think anybody would know. Any guesses out there, panelists? You can just say it out loud. Um, I I'm guessing say it's... B. I heard somebody say B. I was I was gonna say it's B and C. Oh, nice! Oh. Never said couldn't be more than one. You've seen these things before. Anybody else? 
I have I'm no idea. I'm guessing C. Let's see. Michelle says no idea. Katrina says C. Michelle, if you had to guess, what would you guess? B. B. B is a good guess. Uh, the correct answer is actually A. Beyonce <laughs> said uh, that number is special to her because it represents many important dates in her life, including oh. her own birthday on September 4th, her husband oh. Jay-Z's birthday on December 4th, her oh. mother's birthday on January 4th, and her wow. wedding anniversary, April 4th, which is basically wow. the fourth day of the fourth month of the year. It's also the name of her fourth studio album. And in fact, she loves the number so much that she and Jay-Z have Roman numeral uh, fours uh, tattooed on their ring fingers. Anybody here have a lucky number? Michelle, Aram, Katrina, any of you have lucky numbers in particular? I don't know if I would call it lucky, but I love the number 27 because it's three <laughs> cubed. And it, <laughs> I don't know. Nice. I think Nicola the number Nikola Tesla eight. once said the power of the three and the six and the nine and any multiples yeah. of three, there is something special yeah. metaphysically. Nice. Michelle? I said number eight seems to pop up a lot of places. I don't know. I think I have a special one, but yeah. Nice. Eight is big in Buddhism, the eight uh -huh. pole path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Eights float around. It's a beautiful number. It's the number of the octave, too. Aram, any lucky numbers for you? Yeah, I guess I have this in common with Beyonce, but it's it's seeing um, consecutive fours, so 444 four, 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 or 4444. Four, four, four. Um, usually, um, there's always like some sort of synchronicity that happens when I see those numbers. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like even numbers too. I was born uh, 22462. So for what it's worth, I, I do uh, tend to like uh, even numbers, but definitely like my three sixes and nines too. So I'm going to cover all the bases. Are you guys ready for your next question? Sure. Here's your next question. Uh, pop music diva Rihanna holds several world uh, Guinness World Records, including the best selling female digital artist in the US and the first female artist to have number one singles in five consecutive years in the UK. But how old was she when she signed her first record contract? Was it A, 16, B, 17? or C, 18. Anyone who's watching on YouTube, you can say your answers out loud. Otherwise, panelists, what do you think? A. A is a good guess. B. B is a good guess. I'm not going to say C. <laughs> <laughs> C is too old. It's got to be too old. What do you think? 16 or 17? I would say 16. A. The correct answer is A, indeed. Uh, and she was signed by none other than Def Jam Jay Records Z. president, husband to Beyonce, Jay-Z, <laughs> Yep. age 16. Yep. You guys remember what you were doing at age 16? Was anybody like doing anything <laughs> musical at age 16? I was playing a lot of sports, volleyball and track. And... I was oh, playing nice. cello in a youth symphony. Oh, nice. Katrina? I mean, I was in marching band, so I played flute, but um, awesome. 16, I was not making the best decisions. So. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. We have time. <laughs> we'll probably just... <laughs> oh, we'll save that for another podcast say, episode. Let's just say as a teacher, I think I probably, um, I'm surprised people didn't realize how much I was doing while I was in high school. <laughs> Nice. Nice. Yeah, I think age 16 is when I started learning to play guitar. And uh, that's where I have to thank my parents for making me take piano lessons from like fourth grade to 10th grade because did not enjoy them. But they did give me a really good ear for music. So when I started learning guitar, I really just kind of learned by ear uh, and just learned to play along with songs on the radio that I was uh, enjoying listening to. And, a lot of fun years playing guitar after that, but not as good as uh, Rihanna. How about your last question? Are you ready for the last question? Sure. 
Uh, in 2019 American Music Awards, Taylor Swift surpassed Michael Jackson's record to become the most awarded artist at the American Music Awards with how many? Is it A, 30, B, 40, or C, 50? Wow. Oh. Hmm. Somebody on watching this on video was yelling answers out to you right now. <laughs> Somebody who's like a real Swifty fan. Right. I'm not a Swifty. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to go with B. I'm going to go with B as well. I'm going to go with A. Nice. Uh, the correct answer is indeed B, 40. So is anybody here a Swifty? Anybody a fan of Taylor Swift? I could not name a single song of hers. I can't name, I, I can't 50, name a song, but I, I honor her. You <laughs> me too. I think you guys are all. But I'm... I was going to say, not a big fan of her music, but big fan of her personal. Yeah. Just uh, yeah. respect her. She's totally talented. Very. Yeah. It is funny. It is how hilarious how conservative right wingers somehow decided to go to war with Taylor Swift and her <laughs> NFL playing uh, boyfriend. It's like, wow, that seems like uh, they really kind of lost the pulse of America on that one. And apparently Trump uh, came out and released a campaign ad featuring a AI generated image of Taylor Swift seeming to uh, endorse him uh, for uh, president which caused her to turn around. And just today, I think yesterday, she came out and said, no, no, she's voting for Kamala <laughs> and for Tim Walsh, indeed. Hey, so as long as we are going to talk a little bit of politics at the end here, go ahead, tell us uh, how you feel about Kamala Harris as a potentially first president. How do you feel about that, uh, Michelle? Um, I think I alluded to it earlier when I, you know, my reflection and watching the debate last night was her energy was I get heart, I get compassion, I got listening, I got um, masculine power, but non toxic when she walked over to his area to shake his hand. So, yeah, I think, you know, United States is behind the ball. There have been a, other amazing women leaders and women in history and try, I mean, just we're awesome. And as someone said earlier, you know, we were burned at the stake and all the things from a long time ago. So <laughs> we need more feminine energy. I'm feeling hopeful. I, you know, I know there's the shadow side too, and nothing's a given, but uh, it's nice to have hope and think about the opportunity. Indeed. I think she's great. What do you think, Ram? Thoughts on uh, Kamala Harris? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we're, <sighs> If we want to reach equality and parity, we need to start having some female leadership. You know, there's, I don't know, been 45 previous men. So, you know, let's let's tip the scales a little bit. How about one? Is it asking yes. too fucking much that one fucking woman be president yes. for a change? It's, like, it's not yeah. too much to ask. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. What do you think, uh, Katrina? Uh, I literally cried when I found out that she was going to be getting the nomination. And I just think about all these little girls, like having someone to look up to as, you know, I mean, it's one thing when it's vice president, but as women, we're kind of always <laughs> used to being in second place. And um, I just love knowing that she has, she has such a heart. She has such a heart for people and it's so easy to see. And um, I don't think that she's allowed politics to fully, I mean, obviously politics are going to change everyone some way, right? But I don't think she's allowed them to change her in a negative way. She's held mm -hmm. on to her convictions and values. And I, I just, I appreciate that so much. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah, as people who know me know, I am not a fan of the Democratic Party. I'm <laughs> not registered as a Democrat. I'm voted independent. I left the Democratic Party in 2016 mm -hmm. after seeing what happened to Bernie Sanders and so on. But even still, it's like, uh, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Kamala Harris, but she looks good. Everything I've seen from her in this campaign looks good. And I can't think of anything like really bad to say about her that would even compare to the mountains of bad things that I could say about Donald Trump. 
Uh, I mean, as I've said before, I mean, I would vote for The Rock before I would vote for Donald Trump to be president. And I'm not Same talking here. about The Rock, the actor. I'm saying I would vote for a fucking rock that somebody picked up <laughs> on the ground yeah, before I would vote for Donald Trump. And it's just Same amazing here. to me that apparently, according to mainstream media or whatever, that the polls are close, that somehow it's actually yeah. still a close race so between the two. It's not a given. We need some women power. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So I will say, um, as far as the polls go, uh, who's taking polls anymore? I mean, like, mm. I don't answer my phone. I'm not taking polls on the computer. No one under a certain age is taking these polls. So the people who are taking the polls are skewing it a way that in which is not, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think, I think this younger generation is more manipulative with these polls than they than like we give them credit for much like with all of trump's rallies where they would get all the free tickets and then it would be empty because they couldn't do it i mean they think outside the box in a way that um those of us that didn't grow up with the internet <laughs> don't necessarily think sometimes so i don't necessarily fully believe the polls because i'm seeing such a level of excitement in young people that i haven't seen since 2016 and i agree with you on i got <laughs> Yeah. Trump lost in 2020 and every the vast majority of candidates that he's endorsed since then have lost uh, also. Um, right. I think it would be fair to say that uh, all of the big corporations that control all the media uh, operations are run by service to self entities, which, again, are really just trying to keep power uh, amongst their service to self uh, cohorts and minions and such. Hey, uh, thank you for everyone who uh, enjoyed discussing politics at the end of our metaphysical uh, <laughs> podcast. Uh, before we say goodbye, any last goodbyes want to share, uh, Katrina? Um, I would just say, no matter who you are, truly, truly search yourself. Um, truly search to make sure that you're balancing yourself and that your heart is open for love and for light, not just for yourself, but for others. And we really can make a difference in this world by doing that. Well said. Thank you. Uh, Michelle, any last thoughts before we say goodbye? No, not too many. Just love yourself. <laughs> it's the creator. You know. Indeed. Aram? Yeah, I, I would just encourage everyone to see the creator in themselves and see the creator in everyone else. Indeed. Beautiful thoughts to close on. Well, panels, thank you for all you've done and continue to do in service to others and to all our friends at LNL Research. Thank you for all you've done and continue to do in service to others. And for everyone who, for whoever is still watching this on video at some point, thank you for all you've done and continue to do in service to others for watching however much of this episode that you did. Thank uh, you, Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Until next Thank time, you, in the love and light of the one infinite creator. Bye, everybody. Namaste. Okay.